dart gun consists of a spring and a 22 or a 25 gram dart. When the dart is loaded in the gun, it's compressed eight uh, centimeters and the gun is aimed straight up and fired. How high does the dart go, ignoring air resistance? So a lot of things to keep in mind, like change that into kilograms. So that would be 0 0.025 kilograms. Uh, make sure you change that into meters. So that would be 0 0.08 meters. But otherwise, you're starting out with, um, Right, with spring energy, you're not losing any energy to anything, and that is ultimately getting converted into gravitational energy. So um, that's that's going to basically be that on how to set up those ones. So uh, right, this is going to be your one half a squared, and this is your mgh, and that's that's pretty much that one. So not too hard. Um, Moving along, this one is a little bit trickier because you're, it's all in, like you have to do everything in terms of these variables and you have to type it in. So when you go to, when you click here, it's going to um, basically, right, it's gonna ask you to, um, you know, you have to, you have to type in your answer. It's important to remember that like, you have to do it exactly like you have to type in a capital M, a capital X, a capital D, a lowercase h, and a lowercase g. Otherwise, it won't think it's correct. Um, obviously, try to simplify it down as much as you can. It will figure out whether you've typed in, the, you know, even if yours isn't exactly what's in there, um, it'll still figure that out. But um, basically, we have this setup with a spring up here. You're on a table, and uh, we're asked ultimately to figure out like how far this thing is going to go. Um, no, sorry, that's not it. We know how far it goes, it goes distance D. Um, so the first thing is just like how much time has elapsed from the instant the block leaves the table to, to the time it strikes the ground. Um, right, just remember that that's, that's just a kinematic equation. That's just the John equation. Um, so, right, where you just know it falls, um, you know, like, Basically, it starts up here at H, and it ends down here at zero. As it falls, uh, right, it falls at, right, the acceleration is G. Um, and so you're just trying to find uh, the gravitational, or you're trying to find the time. So uh, ultimately, you just end up with Y is equal to 1 half G T squared, or sorry, H. actually kind of set that up wrong. Uh, you end up with that and then you just have to solve for T. Um, and I actually set this up wrong over here. Sorry. Uh, this would be, because you want, this would be zero and it ends down here at, at H. So um, what is the horizontal component of the velocity just after, just before it leaves the floor? Uh, remember that any velocity that it had would have been a result of the spring. So basically, right, it has uh, the spring energy, wait a minute, hang on. Oh, sorry. Nope, that was, I'm going the wrong direction on that. Well, I was tempted to say, I was going to say, oh, you just use the spring energy and that's going to be equal to kinetic energy. The problem is, is that you don't know K, so you can't do it that way because you don't know what the spring constant K is. And so, um, but you are allowed to give things in terms of D. So, Right, because we know that it goes distance d, let's remember that x is equal to vxt for any sort of projectile motion. So we know that the distance, the range of the object is d. Uh, we are looking for vx, like that's what we're being asked to find. And uh, you just calculated t right there, so you can plug that in there. Um, what is the work done by the spring? Uh, well, the work is just equal to our change in energy. And the change in energy is the change in kinetic energy. So, um, you know, you now know, you know that K final was, is going to be one half MV squared. And the V you just calculated, right? Like for, that's from part B. And then your initial kinetic energy was zero. 
sorry, it's not writing very well at the moment, but hopefully that kind of helped with that. And then lastly, what is the spring constant? So then you can do the US is equal to U or to K, sorry. Um, because like, you know that you have, you know how much spring constant was, or sorry, you know how much kinetic energy you have because that was the work that you just calculated. Um, and right, of course, that energy ultimately came from the spring. So then you can put one half kx squared there and calculate um, calculate k then. So does anyone need me to, to go into that in greater detail? Um, let me know, but otherwise that hopefully that kind of clears that up. So each one kind of builds on each other. So, you know, again, the amount of kinetic energy has is the amount of work. One half kx squared defined k. Well, you know that one half kx squared is equal to, sorry, this k is for kinetic energy. Um, and you know how much kinetic energy you have. So that's, that's kinetic, this k right here is kinetic energy supposed to be a capital K, but I'm drawing too fast. So it is supposed to be, which is equal to the work, right? So the work is equal to one half. The problem is that's not gonna, anyway. The work is equal to one half MV squared, which the V comes from your answer to part B. And that work is also equal to the amount of kinetic energy it has. And so, right, in that kinetic energy came from the spring. So you can just set one half K X squared equal to the amount of kinetic energy you have, and then solve for this, this K right here, um, which would be the spring constant. So, all righty. Um, clear all that. So that one's, that one's definitely fairly difficult. Uh, this one, if you did the Tarzan problem already, and remember that I sent you a um, like a how-to for the Tarzan one, um, it's not actually that hard. Just keep in mind that, but ultimately, kind of what you're doing here is right. Your gravitational energy is being at the top of the swing is being turned into your kinetic energy. Um, Oops, no, no, no. Your kinetic energy at the bottom. Um, and that H is going to be equal to L minus L cosine theta, where L is the length of the string. And um, so basically, and the reason that is. And again, you can look at that picture that I sent you through Remind, but, right, so this, this whole thing is L, and this part right here is L cosine theta, then this part, and this is still the length of the string, then that's gonna be L minus L cosine theta, um, because it's the full length minus just that part, which is going to give you L minus L cosine theta. So let's go back to the Tarzan one, which is I think from 5.3. I, I sent you a thing to remind on like how to get that part, but that's how you're going to calculate your, your velocity there. And then these ones are actually not terribly difficult. They're just using the new power equation here. So, um, Right, like, uh, let's see here. You see a bear that runs up a hill. The critter travels this many meters in that many seconds. How much work did the bear do, do on itself? Well, it just changed its, its gravitational energy. Um, so all you need to do is find the height of the, right? So you know that this is 375. Um, you know that that angle is 15 degrees. So find the height. Once you have the height to figure out the work, work is just equal to the change in gravitational energy to be equal to MGH. So that's to get the work. Once you've got that, the power is really easy. You just take the work and divide by the time. So, which is 150 seconds. So that'd be mine. And then lastly, uh, a fireman runs up a vertical ladder. So it's gonna 
go up that height. Um, so again, gravitational energy is just equal to mgh, um, which will end up being your work because it's the change in gravitational energy. And so then power is going to be equal to uh, just work divided by time. You're given that that's your power. And you're just solving for t then. So the w comes from this right here. and uh, and the power comes from the from given in the equation you're just solving for t, so not too bad.